Campbell. Welcome to Nashville Meets World. Today, we have somebody really cool. Come on, we always have people who are really cool, but some people are cooler than others. Uh, she's so cool, she's got a CD. Look. <laughs> Ooh. It's Amanda Page Corner. How are you doing? Nice I'm to have you here. Thanks for having me. I was so stoked Glad because to be here. Uh, the single that got sent to me, Total Blues. Yes. And, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Thank you. Thank you. We had my style has come along yeah. between my band and I. We've been playing for over eight years from the back of the album. Um, and they've been very integral to my sound. Yeah. And we call it Southern Rock and Soul. That's cool. Because it integrates country, blues, rock. Yeah, I mean, rock. and that comes from a really cool heritage, too, like the Melvin Brothers, Janis mm -hmm. Joplin. Uh, it's just... Well, and I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina, yeah. on the Marshall Tucker Band. That's right. And then uh, we recorded the album down in Muscle Shoals. So <laughs> a few of the songs on the album actually were written in Fame Studio B, wow. where the Almond Brothers pretty much created Southern Rock. So wow. it was pretty, pretty fantastic. I always loved the Almond better than Skinner, because Skinner... I always stay pretty straight ahead rock, mm -hmm. but the almonds just brought soul and blues and everything you're doing. It, it, so, well, it was pretty magical to get to write in the first place of Southern Rock, yeah. Kind of fame. Um, yeah. And then we recorded in Nut House Recording Studio, which is in Sheffield, which is right outside <laughs> that. And um, it was pretty magical having Spooner Oldham and Mark Normore and guys like that on the album. Nice, pretty cool. So, and bringing in. The funk of Muscle Shoals with the Southern Rock of Spartanburg yeah. and all my influences. So I, I love it. I totally love your sound. Thank you. Um, and like you said, you've taken some time to kind of develop the sound you want. How long has it kind of taken you to nuance it where <laughs> you're happy with this is my signature sound? Well, it, it took quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. It took, I mean, I've been here for quite a while in Nashville yeah. and I think I started out thinking I was more of a country rock artist and then it just melded and developed and developed and started writing with people like Mark Armour from Muscle Shoals and getting to go down there. My band comes from a rock background, but they're also from uh, South Georgia, just south of Macon. They're from Milledgeville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So they grew up with that Macon yeah. sound as well. So they grew up with a lot of that Southern rock influence from Capricorn and all that as well. So it's it's been a cool melding of styles and personalities, they're all brothers and sister, yeah. and I joke that I'm their distant cousin, so, and they really are part of my Well, family. down there, you could marry them then. Um. I'm from South Carolina, not Georgia, though. We try not to go there. It's just, so, you know, insert your southern state here, I usually right, make those right. about Arkansas, so. Right, or West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Well, in West Virginia, they have the web toes, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke. Um, so, tell us about how kind of you got your start and, and what decided that you wanted to do music business. I have probably been making up songs since I could talk. Mm -hmm. I started writing them down when I was nine right. and started recording them, you know, recording mm -hmm. tape player. And then I had a great guitar teacher when I was, I think, late middle school, early high school, who had a top 10 or top 15 hit when he was. Top 10 hit when he was 15. Uh, Joe Bennett, it was a uh, Joe Bennett and the Sparkle Tones, and they had a rockabilly song called Black Slacks. <laughs> and he asked me, he said, you know, he knew that I just wanted to learn guitar just, mm -hmm. just so I could play along with my songs. And he said, when do you write? And I said, I write when it hits me. And his response was, I want to challenge you to make it a skill, not just a talent. Mm -hmm. He said, we lost our record deal because we could only write when it came to us. Oh. So he gave me a title and he said, I want you to write this. And I came back the next week and he said, I thought about that. That was probably like too difficult. And I was like, here's the song. <laughs> but really, of any advice I've ever gotten, that was probably the most integral. Yeah. Make it a skill, not just a talent. Hone your craft. Make it to where you can do it no matter what mood you're in. And that, that was huge. And that's the thing about Nashville, is you get up, you have a co-write. You go to lunch, you have a co-write. Right. And if you're not out playing songwriter rounds or playing at night, you're trying to find a co-write. Right, you know? or a gig. Trying to yeah. find gigs or co-writes or yeah. keeping up with everything else. So, so yeah, it, it, and that's how the hits just keep coming. And you have to write a lot of songs to get those hits. So. Yeah. Now, with your style of music, 
do you lean more towards blues or is it just everything we talked about, like the almonds there? Which makes you hard to put in a box. I am hard to put in a box. We, we've we definitely made a, what I call a genre bending album. Mm -hmm. My uh, co-producer is my guitar player, yeah. uh, Randall Scott Peterson, and we took six months to pick the songs and do pre-production. We wanted to make sure it was music that we really lo loved. And he's mm -hmm. very big on the melodical side. Mm -hmm. I'm huge on the lyrics, making sure they come through. So it was a perfect yin-yang mm -hmm. um, partnership. and. We worked really hard. We wanted to make an album that we were proud of, regardless of if it was Nashville or whatnot. Um, but that's one reason we went down to Muscle Shoals too, because there's a, there really is something about that area, yeah. Yeah. and it's it's kind of magical, and it's it's still about the music. Mm -hmm. the, there, I mean, there's no matching the talent of musicians in Nashville, but there's still something about musicians who own what they're playing and don't just show up to play. And yeah. I love that. We had Wayne Bridge on um, steel guitar and a couple songs, and I mean, he played on like Grandma Got Run Over by Reindeer. That's not a selling point for me. I hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so song. cool. And then Charles Rose yeah. from the original Muscle Shoals yeah. horn section uh, ripped the horns on two of the songs, and it, it was really a magical experience. Uh, we went down for five days, didn't want to have distractions of yeah. Nashville life, so we took off work and nice. worked for ourselves for the week <laughs> so because nice. uh, you know when you watch the the blue stuff that comes out mm -hmm. and there's some incredible female blues artists Absolutely. All I mean, Beth Hart um, and she's really that whole Janice Johnson mm -hmm. thing but Samantha Fish is is hot right now and it, it just it seems like the women are getting more opportunities in that side of the field yes. than, than what's happening in the country well, and it's, I really don't care where people classify it. That's a good way to be. Though. You know, I, I feel like some of my stuff is better suited for maybe country radio. Yeah. Some of it's more suited for rock radio, or some of it's more suited for blues. And I'm okay with that. I know most people want you to choose a side, but it can fit all of them. And I think so much music melds these days. And you can, you can release two singles to two different genres exactly. at a different time. Exactly. Yeah. That's excellent. I like this, like Susan Tedeschi. She's yeah, kind of that's, that's, yeah. that southern rock, but also comes out with some power, you know, power ballads okay. and stuff. Yeah. And I just want to make music that makes people feel. I have a mission statement for my music, which is a little unusual, but. When so many artists are coming up and, and they say, well, I'm country, but I'm not really in it. It's like, don't worry about you putting a label on it. You just make music because there's going to be plenty of other people out there wanting to label it right. for you. And mm -hmm. you'll like that sometimes and you'll absolutely hate it sometimes. Well, and I've gotten to where my style kind of melded to where I call it somewhere between the Judds and James Joplin. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good way. And actually that's the first song on the yeah. album is Judds and Joplin. Somebody said, y'all need to write that. And I was like, that's a good idea. So Mark Normore and I got together and we wrote it. And if you know any of their songs, you'll hear tons of references. <laughs> But I think we did a good job of making it make sense even if you don't get any of the references. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, why not? Those people were passionate about their music. Mm -hmm. And that's really the artists I've always been drawn to, are people that are passionate. You can hear the emotion no matter whether it's just having a good time or it's sad or it's happy or it's loving. I mean, you can feel the emotion and that's my goal. And I always find too, because it, it's obvious you listen to all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. and, and I find the more people I talk to that are creators of music. The ones that stand out as incredible artists are the ones that listen to everything. Mm -hmm. Will listen to jazz, listen to blues, listen to rock, progress like everything. I listen to everything except techno, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hip hop, you know, whatever R and B. I mean, I, it's a great song is a great song. Yeah. And it, it inspires too. I mean, like for me, I was really I was into you know growing up when I did. 70s and 80s, um, progressive rock was huge with Genesis and Rush mm -hmm. and Yes and all those bands. And those bands got me into classical music mm -hmm. because they were doing long songs with different movements. And mm -hmm. I realized classical is the same thing. Well, my guitar player um, was a classical guitarist, yeah. but he's always grown up playing heavy rock. Yeah. And it's amazing. He'll get up and do finger exercises in the morning for two hours. 
And I'm like, eh, good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're a guitar player. Yeah, so people up for that, and that ain't me. Me neither. <laughs> you want to do a song? Yeah, and, I'd love to. And uh, and then we can talk some more. Thank you. Guitar. Thank you. It's the first one I ever bought myself. So. Well, soon you'll be at that that point where you don't have to buy them. Be great. Yeah. Be great. Except I really like both mine right now. So. <laughs> Get comfortable. I'm trying to figure out the best position. I just want to stay on my arm. On the couch. Is that okay? Yes, <laughs> just so I'm up a little higher. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> just so I have a little more room for my arms. There you go. So this is uh, the current single, Throw Go yep. Fast. We just put a music video out on January 1st. Mm -hmm. Figured we'd set 2020 on fire. Which cool, makes hey, sense once I sing it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. So you have nothing to be nervous about. I see you shaking. I don't think I am, am I? I don't know. Can I... yeah. ah! 
We just sit with the goof anyway. So huh? We just sit with the goof. Yeah, anyway. yeah. fair. Um, I'm used to sitting on myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so are you at the point now where you could be making music full time or are you still at that point where you have to do a normal person's job to kind of supplement? I am still working part, I joke that I work part time for a living. Yeah. Uh, I majored in sports medicine so it gives me an opportunity to work for myself and nice. uh, work with clients so I can make my own schedule nice. um, but I'm, I'm actively working on booking and trying to find help with booking especially because I have all the pieces of the puzzle except that's the one that's the, yeah. the tricky one. So that's what I'm trying to work on. So eventually once I get that ramped up more, um, that's the goal is to be able to let go of the other. Nice. So if you're a booking agent out there, a reputable booking agent, not yes. some guy named Dave that says, yeah, I book, <laughs> um, then reach out to her. That would be great. Um, how many dates are you kind of doing now or maybe? Right now, it's been a little bit slow. Uh, since we put the album out, we've been really focusing on building, getting my marketing back up where it should be and getting the media everywhere. And now we're ready to kind of take the world on. So we'd love to be doing full time. I'd love to be able to get my band and not have to work their day jobs either. So and that means out of national. It does, it does. You so. want to get paid. And it, it means <laughs> doing multiple dates out of yeah. town, for even if it starts out on weekends for um, their purposes, because yeah. my band all have jobs. but. Yeah. Um, the goal is to be able to support us all. It, that's probably the most satisfying thing is when you can say, we're making enough, mm -hmm. we're doing this full time, that we can quit. Right. And that, that is absolutely the goal. So if it means going out and doing acoustic gigs mm -hmm. myself, uh, that's great. I did a few dates in St. Pete a few years ago, like four gigs in five days, and it was right. a lot of fun. Adding in house parties, which is always a lot of fun. So if anybody wants a house party too, those yeah, are a lot of fun. So they've really taken off probably in the last maybe ten years. Well, house they're party. wonderful yeah. because you get to actually interact with people on a different level than you do when you're on a stage. Yeah. You actually can bring people up. They can actually ask you questions while you're sitting there. So it's not just a performance; it's more interactive. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a lot of fun. It's fun whether it's just me or whether it's the band, um, but it, it's it's a lot of fun I think for the fans as well, and you actually get to build a camaraderie with people more than just being a face. And, and people forget, I mean, the music business it, it's all about relationships. Absolutely. And they buy an album and they tell their friends you gotta go buy this album, mm -hmm. and then you've got a fan base. Right. They right. say it takes a hundred true fans. Yeah. Hundred true fans to keep promoting you to like help promote you. And then when you do the math and you think, if you use uh, social media as an example, if you've got 100,000 likes on your Facebook mm -hmm. page, the traditional rule is that about 10% of those will spend money on you. That makes sense. So if you get 10% of those people buying $100 worth of stuff every year, CDs, right. merch, tickets to the show, you're doing pretty good. Right. So let's get to that point. I have t-shirts, yeah. I have CDs, I have, <laughs> I have real CDs, or you can buy all my music online. Uh, and you can order, order, order them from the Spiegel catalog, Chicago 60602. <laughs> uh, I have guitar picks. Yeah, those are cool. You've got, you've got a glow in the dark one. I do. Yeah. And it does work. It does glow in the dark. So We're not going to turn off all the things to prove it. Uh, uh, koozies, everything. And you can get them through uh, reaching out through my website or at live shows. So nice. you can actually get physical copies of the CD as well if you go through my website. So, yeah. um, What's your most fun part of your life as an artist? Being on stage, performing yeah. with my band. I've gotten the opportunity to... I got to sing with Marsha Tucker Band a couple of times, yeah. which was pretty cool. I, I grew up with their kids, yeah. but it wasn't until I moved here that I actually got to know Doug and uh, Rick Willis and all those guys, and they're awesome. But then also, uh, Artemis Powell from Leonard Skinner yeah. lives uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, and we met on a TV show, and I got the nerve up to call him and ask him to play a gig my drummer couldn't make, and he yeah. did. Wow. So we've become friends, and we had a five-hour rehearsal at his house. We videoed the whole thing. Nice. He told us so many cool stories, and I mean, 
uh, there's a line in Judson Joplin that says, a little Skinner to rock me, and all I could think was, oh my gosh, Leonard Skinner's drummer is behind me rocking us as we sing this. This is the coolest thing ever, but all the people I've met in, in Southern Rock World from, you know, Artemis to Tim Lauder to Doug Gray from our Tucker Band and all the people in Muscle Shoals are just amazing. Yeah. And they've been a it, great community. That's a real brotherhood. It is, it is. Being politically correct. It, it's just, there's something about that group of people making Southern Rock that's mm -hmm. different from everything. And they're so nice. Yeah. Nashville's a community. The Southern Rock people, it's a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Artemis had one of his sons' name is Marshall Daniel. <laughs> Not kidding. And after Charlie Daniels and Marsh Strucker yeah. band. Um, wow. So if that tells you they have a lot of respect for each other, it's it's pretty pretty cool. I saw Skinner in London, and it was after their God and Guns. It was during the God and Guns tour, <clears throat> and. It was so cool because whether you like their music or not, it was an incredible show because it's a master class in how to rock. Mm -hmm. It was just, they knew what stuff needed to be a medley, what songs had to stand on their own, and they, hardly, they, did, they did two songs from the new album, mm -hmm. and it was a medley. Uh, everything else was back catalog, and it was mm -hmm. great. And only in Southern Rock can you take a song like Can't You See, Mark yeah, Tucker yeah. And make it ten minutes on stage. Yeah, yeah. three verse song. Make it ten minutes. It's and that's pretty incredible because they're all just jamming. That song's been covered by so many people mm -hmm. too of different genres. Mark Chestnut covered it. Uh, Kid Rock and Zach Brown Band covered it. Uh, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. that that music is legendary. I use that one as an homage to my hometown boys, so yeah. Spartan Bird boys. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> nice. You want to do another song? Sure. Sure. Cool. If you need to retune, I probably would. Then I can just ask you main questions. <laughs> um, would you like I know. something beachy, or would you like something more serious, or? You do what shows you off to the world. Mm, you're right. No pressure there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess since we did a rocker, maybe we'll do a little bit. Okay. Her name is Amanda Page Cornett. This is the album. It's called Front Porch Rebel. Oh no, it's not. Yes. It is. It is. Uh, we can't forget her band, Almost Angels. Uh, this is a cool album. I made sure they were on there too. The artist was like, I don't know if we should put them on the back of it. And I was like, no, we have to. Yeah. Non negotiable. Yeah, well, I mean, that's part of name, my sound. Name a solo artist in Southern Rock. Right? It's all band. Right? And yeah, I mean, even if, if I'm considered that, you know. They are a part of my sound. They've yeah. been a part of building my sound as much as anybody. So yeah. um, I've decided to switch it up. So I'm going to do a little move the string here because it's in the Do way. you need to sit up here so, again? I do, probably. Right. It's a little easier just so I'm not sinking down like that. You know, it's got to be up higher. Just like a true artist, right? I have to Pretty get up high. higher. <laughs> uh, this is a song I wrote with uh, Mark Norman Lauren called Carnal Holder in Fame Studio yeah. B. Um, and we had been writing with Spooner Oldham all day, and he had left for the day. I'm pretty sure he was not happy that he left before this one, but uh, it's a very honest song, and we ended up doing it with just grand piano and vocal on the album. So it's called Someone to Miss Me. <laughs> Oh 
and he said that he always writes everything on an acoustic and he said he always practices on an acoustic. Mm -hmm. You always see him playing electric mm -hmm. on stage, but he said with an electric guitar you can change, you, you've got the technology, you can right. foot pedals and all that kind of stuff you can make things, but with a guitar all you've got is that little round hole mm -hmm. and you have to make all that stuff work on its own. Right, that's true, that is true. Um, so it's come time of the show where we play Asked and Answered. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't involve playing the place around. Our viewers from around the world sent in questions. Well, it was not a whole jar because you people have been slackers and not sending me questions. Um, <laughs> so just reach in there. Hold on a question. I feel like reading a raffle. So this is from Nikki in Milden Hall, England, okay. and it says, are you left or right-handed? And I am right-handed. Okay. So, which I don't understand why right-handed guitars have this hand being the strum hand. Yes. I feel like it would be much easier for this hand to be the little hand, but, which is why a lot of my left-handed friends play right-handed guitars. Yeah. So. I, I'm bidextrous. Are you? Some things I do left-handed and some things I do right-handed. Okay. Well, I've learned to write with my left hand. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that my, Penmanship, though shakier, I write my letters the same way, which tells you it's the brain that forms yeah. it. Now, can you write? You can you write things backwards and upside down? I'm sure if I would have tried it. <laughs> I actually started learning when I was having uh, I had a bad car wreck and yeah. I had nerve pain in both hands. Yeah. And one would hurt more than the other, so I started learning how to write with my left hand okay. so that I would. Give this one a break. So yeah. yeah. Now I write mostly on a computer. So. So there you go, Nikki. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like a question on asked and answered, get your button in here and send them to me. Uh, just private message me here on uh, National Meets World on Facebook. Uh, final question. Yes. Uh, Amanda Page Cornett is going out on her first international headlining tour. Mm -hmm. Who supports you? Financially or emotionally? No, who, who takes you, who's your support act? Who opens for you? Hmm, oh, who opens for me? Yes. There are so many people. I have a lot of really awesome co-writers here in town that mm -hmm. I write with that are also rockers. Um, I would probably say right now Dave Isaacs, which nice. he might, I might be opening for him. He's the kind of considered the Nashville guitar guru, cool. uh, and he's become a really great friend and co-writer, and we play a lot of gigs together and have a lot of fun, and. He and my band love playing with each other as well. So I think it would be a lot of fun to do an international tour with Dave and right. his band. Now you mentioned, just finally, you mentioned Steve Goody. Mm -hmm. Steve Goody has sent us questions for us and answered, and you can tell because they're the weird questions. Yes. And we always make an example of Steve Goody's questions. Love it. Um, I wish I picked one of his. That would be so perfect. I know. Uh, we got to get him in here. <laughs> um, so, what's on, on the agenda coming up that people need to check you out? Right now, we're working on our next single release, which is coming out probably in March. Mm -hmm. um, and we're finalizing some music videos. Like I said, we just put the music video out for Throw a Little Gas, and we're trying to still give that some traction and set the world on fire. Nice. Pun intended. Yeah. You know, I'm a dork. I love puns. Leave so. the bad jokes to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But, um, you know, we're also booking a lot of stuff. We're uh, 
right now we've got a few bookings on the dates. Nice. Switch that, and that's what I meant to say. We have a few dates on, on the books. books. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> and I'm writing a ton. I'm writing yeah. uh, next week. I'm going down to Muscle Shoals to write for two days cool. with Mark Narmore and Grant Walden. And uh, I'm writing with um, today. I'm writing with a couple of people, and tomorrow with Gray Walson, who. I have to promote this because it was so exciting. He had a song in the Super Bowl halftime show. Nice. He uh, wrote Love Don't Cost a Thing for J-Lo. So oh, I had my camera ready to <laughs> video it so I could send it to him. So I'm really excited for Greg. That was pretty, yeah, pretty that's a, incredible. That's a score. It is a score. It's a score. And I'm glad I get to write with these talented people. Her name is Amanda Page Coronet. The album is Front Porch Angel. Go and see, uh, go see Amanda with her band, Almost Angel. Yes. Uh, check out her Facebook and website Absolutely. and you can find out where and, and buy her stuff. Yes. Uh, really support. <laughs> I, I'm, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Right. I enjoyed it. So. <laughs> you're, you're a talent. Thank you. you. Really thank you. Um, I'll tell the world. Yes. Friends, <laughs> tell the world. Uh, thanks for watching Nashville Meets World today. Make sure you catch me on Chris Country all across the UK every Sunday at midday right after my buddy Kicks Brooks. We'll see you next time. Oh, my